Let it rise. Somebody say, oh, oh. Come on, Ashley. Let's go. Oh, oh. Come on, Francisco. Let it rise. Somebody say, oh, oh. oh. Incredible song leader Jose, always leading the way in zeal and excitement to worship God. Mm. And I hope that's how you feel right now as we're going to jump into the scriptures, into the Bible this morning. You know, let's go, Tyler. Today is in fact the last. Sunday of 2020. Can you guys believe wow. that? Wow. wow. Thank the Lord. I mean, oh, I mean somebody say, oh, oh, you know, I'd be like, like wow, oh. that's incredible to think about all that God has done minute. here. What a year it's been. January, we had the winter workshop here in the San Francisco Bay. We, had, of course, my wife and I at the time were over in Dallas, Fort Worth. Uh, we Come got on. to have the Hawaiian Islands Missions Conference, the very first one, and see all of these brothers and sisters throughout the dream geographical sector come together. They're on the islands, the ends of the earth, Hawaii being the most isolated mm -hmm. place in the world. And then as we came back from that retreat, we know March 19th became an official stay-at-home order for California, followed by many other states. And since that time, we've all been in a form of whether it's been a stay at home or quarantines or all of these different parts and pieces now for over 283 days. Can you guys believe that right there? Wow. Almost a year. And here we continue to do that. We've been doing a social unrest and protests for many political and social situations in the midst of all of this. We've gone through watching as the Olympics, which are only held once every four years, were canceled. We're supposed to have Olympics this summer. Then we come in now into the fall. We watched as schools either were done online or they were canceled, as you couldn't go on campuses anymore, as all of these situations took place. We watched as we had an election for the presidency of the United States of America. I mean, you talk about all that's taken place and all of these things have happened in the midst of COVID-19 and all of the after effects. You know, I'm sure there are many points and many times where many of us on this call right now, we wanted to throw in the towel. We wanted to yeah. quit. We wanted to give up. Some of us, we wanted to quit our jobs, our families, our circumstances. We wanted to quit our careers. Some of us, we wanted to quit on Jesus and not be disciples. And dare we say, there are even times for us. Some of us thought about quitting this life itself. And yet for us this morning, the charge is very simple. As we come into the final lap, as we come into the very end and close of this year, the year of dreams and visions of what we saw, what we wanted to, to, to do for God, that we wanted to accomplish, the title for us this morning is Finish the Race. We like that, bro. We come on, bro. Better go ahead. Come on, bro. You know, we started it. Go, Tyler. We started to get to going. We started running right there January 1st. And then all of a sudden, it took a completely different route. It went a different way than what we expected. And if we're honest, that's how it is every single year. We have our plans, but God has his plans. And so this morning, as we talk about how to finish the race, I want to talk about two points this morning. Look on over in 2 Peter chapter 1. Finish the race. Come on, bro. 2 Peter bro. chapter 1. Come on, bro. You know, the Bible reads here in verse 5. It says, for this very reason, make every effort to add to your faith goodness and to goodness knowledge and to knowledge self-control and to self-control perseverance and to perseverance godliness and the godliness mutual affection and a mutual affection love 
For if you possess these qualities in increasing measure, they will keep you from being ineffective and unproductive in your knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. But whoever does not have them is nearsighted and blind, forgetting that they have been cleansed from their past sins. Therefore, my brothers and sisters, my brothers and sisters in Silicon Valley, in San Jose, and oh, on, all the other That's places, That's make us. every effort to confirm your calling and election. For if you do these things, you will never stumble. And we stop right here. You know, the last thing we ever want to do in a race is stumble. That we enjoy and dare we say we cringe at those videos where an individual is running the race and all of a sudden they start to, you see them and just, and then one step, then another step. And pretty soon they, they fall flat on their face. And when we fall, we're very tempted the next time we run, right? We run a little more gingerly. We run a little with a little bit more apprehension rather than running as fast as we can. You see our, our dear brother, Jason Dimitri, him and his wife, Sarah, that, that lead the church here in San Francisco. And, and right now he's working on an incredible book called Company of Prophets. And, and many on this call are men and women that are part of that company of prophets, men and women that are training up to do great things for God. Come on, and on. one of his, his points that he really emphasizes, he says, hey, we need to be excellent in everything that we do. And that excellence really transpires and it transcends us to do great things. And he says, we need to excel in everything. Amen. And on, so bro. our first point this morning is in fact a little takeaway from that, that we need to excel in everything. That's our first point, but it's not the one that you're thinking of. Come on, bro. It's not E-X-C-E-L, not to excel as become excellent, but to excel, right? To put mm -hmm. our foot down mm -hmm. on the gas, to accelerate, to excel oh, everything. Go, Come on, bro. Why is this so important? Why, why, why a changing of this word? Because the Bible doesn't say just to have these things in our life, but back there, in verse eight, is this for if you possess these qualities in increasing measure. We've got to be increasing as disciples, accelerating, going even faster, even stronger in these areas, in these characters of our life. If we're going to continue to be men and women who don't just start the race, but we finish the race. Amen. Come on, bro. 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 Amen, bro. Come on. The very first one he says to add to, to make every effort, we've got to add it to your faith. Why does Peter talk about faith? Because in his first letter to the brothers and sisters in 1 Peter chapter 1, verses 6 to 9, he says, in all this, you greatly rejoice. Is that how we feel right now? That we've gone through Come all on. of this, and yet we greatly rejoice? Yeah. Come on, Tyler. For a little while. You may have had to come suffer on. griefs and all kinds of trials. These have come so that the proven genuineness of your faith of greater worth than gold, which perishes even though refined by fire, may result in praise, glory, and honor when, though when Jesus Christ is revealed. Though you have not seen him, you love him. And even though you do not see him now, you believe in him and are filled with an inexpressible and glorious joy. For you are receiving the end result of your faith, the salvation of your souls. Let's you see, go. Us, we go through hardships and trials because it solidifies what we do and why we do it. And then it says, once you go through those trials and you have that faith, you can then add to them in an in, in increasing measure. Amen. Amen. Come on, bro. Come on, bro. Come on, bro. Faith Come on, bro. Come on. is the starting line. We start everything with our faith as disciples. And yet when we get to that starting line, it's not the time to then, you know, go backwards. It's not the time to go in the wrong lane. It's time to run that race. That's how we all started as men. And when, when we were baptized into Christ, it wasn't the end. 
Rather, it was simply the beginning of the greatest race we could ever Hi, Bob, come run. On. Amen. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Amen. Come when on. When you start a race, you must start it as fast as you can. On, you know, for so many young Christians in our respective regions right now, it's been incredible to see them start this race. And they didn't just go like, well, I guess I'll just kind of dip my toes. They decided they're all in, you know, in the midst of the trials of COVID, in the midst of quarantine, in the midst of all these nice little mm -hmm. Zoom meetings and, and getting converted via over screens and learning the truth that way. They said, you know, there's only one way to do this. It doesn't matter whether it's virtual or whether we're in person. We're going to be all in as disciples. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Let's go, bro. We all Come on. Must excel and everything. You know, back in the 1950s, Back before I was, I think I was in middle school at that point in the 1950s for you guys here. Oh. There's the story of the world record being broken for the mile, the one mile run, right? We all love having to run those four laps in high school or whatever oh for, for physical education, ah, the word. right? And there was a man named Roger Bannister. Now, the idea of the mile, one mile or at times 1,500 meters, 1,600 meters, right? being ran under a time of four minutes was seen as impossible. Now today, people in the Olympics, they run the mile backwards under four minutes, basically. But at the time, it was said to have never have been physically possible for a human being to run that time under four minutes. And a man named Roger Bannister took that challenge on. And he started training and he started working every single day and different circuits and different parts to it. And on May 6th, 1954, in Oxford, England, he ran a mile in three minutes and 59.4 seconds. Ooh. He did the impossible. Dang. Why in the world? Well, you said what? And everybody goes, wait a minute. Mr. Bannister, now it's Sir Bannister, Sir Roger Bannister. He was knighted later because of his accomplishments. They said, how were you able to do that? How could you, how could you get in this race and run it under four minutes? He's quoted as saying, I started out by running as fast as I could, and then I gradually got faster. Come on. You wow. know, for us, as we That's run this race, as we excel in everything, it's now is not the time to go, well, you know, I'll slowly work my way into it little by little. We need to run as fast as we can and gradually get faster. Are you with me, your church? Come on, bro. Come you know, on, bro. Let's go. Let's go. We got to look at our own growth spiritually in the midst of this time, in the last year. Have we become ineffective and unproductive? Have we been doing a lot, but not seeing the results? Sometimes we can be busy, but not seeing true productivity for the Lord or for our lives. Have we become nearsighted and blind that now we've started to create a tunnel vision and all we can see is right in front of us rather than go, God, what do you want me to see? What do you want me to do? And having an even greater faith in that way. Have we forgotten of what we've been forgiven of? Have we lost gratitude for the cross? I'll tell you what, our dear sister Alicia has not lost gratitude for the cross. This is why Come we on, take Alicia. communion every single week so we can renew and refresh our gratitude to remember why we do what we do. Not because Come we were just Alicia. intellectually convinced of it because somebody showed us something. Oh, that makes sense. I guess I'll do that. Because giving up everything, giving up your life doesn't make sense. But when you understand that the son of God who came down to earth, he lived a sinless life. He died on the cross for your sins, for my sins. And he was able to be resurrected by God. When you think of that and he did that for you, then giving up our lives in exchange really seems so little. Yeah. Come Let on, us be bro. filled with gratitude. Bro. Amen. You know, we need to Amen. accelerate. We need to speed up. We need to, number one, we need to speed up our walk with God. You see, a lot of us, we're walking with God, and it's time to run with God. Mm. 
to push ourselves go, out Tanner. of our come on, comfort bro. zone. Come it's on. Easy, right? We, we start off, we, we like the walk with God, right? We go, wow, this is awesome. And then pretty soon, we start doing the, the speed walk. You ever seen the people that do like the weird little speed walk thing? And it's like actual Olympic event, right? And you get used to that. But now trying to like actually run and push ourselves. No, 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 I, I like the walk. I like the scenic route. It's uh -oh. familiar. I've done it many times. I'm used to this. You see, Bible says in Isaiah 40 that even youths grow tired and weary, but those who rely on the Lord will renew their strength. They will run and not grow weary. For Come many of us, man. it's time to take our walk with God into a run with God and go even farther, go the distance for Jesus Christ. Come on, bro. Secondly, we need to accelerate, as it talks about there, our maturity to grow in our perseverance, to grow in our brotherly love, to grow in our kindness, to grow in all of these areas. And we need more brothers and sisters to grow and step up if we're going to see what we want to see in 2021, which of course is the year of mountain. Oh, moving. oh yeah. Thank you. There you really go. Hard. Come on, Tanya. Preach that, bro. Oh. Preach that. Let us accelerate. I simply want to challenge you to accelerate the growth in your life to make every Let's effort. Come on. You know, Martin Luther King once said, if you can't fly, then run. If you can't run, then walk. If you can't walk, then crawl. But whatever you do, you have to keep moving forward. If we've been in the crawling position as disciples, it's time to get back up on your feet and start walking. If we've simply been walking, it's time to start running for the Lord. And if we've been running this race, let's take it even higher and let fly high for the Lord right there. Come on, bro. And everything we do. Amen. Our second Amen. point. Amen. Cross the finish line. You know, to finish the race, you must cross the finish line. But what's the cross? in which we need to finish. It's the cross itself. That if we're going to get across this, it's going to be mm. with the cross that we're called to, to carry daily. We need to cross the finish line, amen. Come on, bro. Amen, bro. Look over in Luke chapter 23. We're going to have a quick little synopsis of the cross here. And understand a little bit more. And Luke chapter 23. Come on, Tyler. Let's go, bro. Let's down go, bro. in verse 26. The Bible reads, as the soldiers led him away, they seized Simon from Cyrene, who was on his way from the country, and put the cross on him and made him carry it behind him. Jesus, we stop here. We can learn a lot from Simon from Cyrene. First, he's from Cyrene. It's in Northern Africa and Eastern modern day Libya. And it takes over two weeks to travel this journey over 1,100 miles. And it just so happened he was traveling from the country. He just happened to be coming by. That isn't even why he was there. And yet he walked in on the moment where Jesus was carrying the cross. And we're going to quickly learn three aspects about how to cross the finish line. You with me, your family? With you, bro. Come on, bro. Yeah. Number one. Come on, Tyler, we're with you, bro. These are our little sub points right here. Number one, crosses come when you least expect it. Crosses come when you least expect it. I think we can all agree that that's, that's the message of 2020. The, the cross of COVID that we were called to carry, the oh, cross yeah. of the challenges of the quarantine, of not meeting together, of our ministries, of our lives, of our marriages, all of these things. This is the cross and it came when we least expected it. You know, we, we find here, he's probably just watching this going on. 
He just happened to hear of the, the commotion. He's in Cyrene. He didn't have Twitter, right? He wasn't getting a, a little status update of what was happening in Jerusalem. Like, man, Jerusalem, I got to get there. This is crazy. And he gets there, right? And, and he arrives and, and he's trying to look and, and he's geo-tracking everything, you know, whatever's going on from the selfies and where they're at. No, he didn't know this. He just happened to be there. He probably didn't even know who Jesus of Nazareth was. It's like, man, who's this guy? This is a really, it's like a parade. Going. Wow, the procession isn't that of people throwing candy and celebrating. The procession is of a man being killed. You know, the irony is Simon was the only one who carried the cross that day other than Jesus. And here's the irony. He wasn't even a follower of Jesus. It wasn't Peter that carried the cross. It wasn't James or John. It wasn't any of the women. It wasn't any of the followers. It was this random man in the world who was forced to carry the cross of Jesus. And we must make sure wow. that the world is never more committed and ready than disciples of Christ. Wow. Come on, bro. The Come on, Tyler. Can be more committed. On, Tyler. The world can be more, more willing to take up a cross that was forced on them rather than us realizing and knowing what we must do and take it up daily. There could be many responses to the cross. The disciples fled. They knew getting arrested would mean they'd be crucified too. Peter denied Jesus three times. But remember, G Peter was the one that said, even if all others leave you, I never will. He lacked a sober judgment. He didn't want to accept where he really was. Many of us, we can be this same way to Jesus. We go, Jesus, I'll never leave you. Jesus, I'll never turn to impurity. I'll never go back to the world. I'll never turn to these things again. And yet, because we don't understand our own weaknesses, we just think our own feelings and willpower is going to stop it. But we've got to have a sober judgment. And then he tries to internally justify it by following Jesus at a distance. Well, I didn't like abandon Jesus completely. I'm just following at a safe distance so people don't catch me and end in the same result as him. You know, another response can be like Judas, which is really no different in regards to the sin that he commits. Yes, he betrays Jesus, but so did all the disciples. Judas just got some money out of it rather than all the rest of them that just ran off. You know, we can try to justify it internally in the same way that, that well, you know, Jesus is going to get out of it like he always does. Remember, Jesus was pushed all the way to an edge of a cliff at one point, and he walked through the crowd. And so perhaps Judas said, well, yeah, I'm going to get some money and I'm leaving, but this guy's going to get out of it. He's, you know, he's, he knows what he's doing. No one's going to kill this guy. And when it all came down to it, he didn't want to take responsibility. And when it was taken out of his control, he found another way to take control by being his own judge and deciding what he needed. And many times when we see our sin, what's going, we want to lash ourselves. We want to just let, let the worst happen or make the worst happen to ourselves rather than accepting the grace that's around us, whether it's wow. the grace from Come our on, brothers bro. and sisters and their on, forgiveness bro. or the ultimate forgiveness where it all comes from, from Jesus Christ, from our father in heaven. Preach. Come on, bro. You know, Pilate. Good stuff, bro. He valued his power and reputation over doing what was right. He was willing to compromise in order to keep what he wanted. And I think many times we can be, as we're studying the Bible, and we, we can be people pleasers. We see what the Bible says, but it doesn't vibe with what our family said. It doesn't jive with what we grew up with. And we know our mom, dad, cousin, girlfriend, boyfriend, whatever, they're not going to like it. So we start to go, okay, well, what can I do? I need to please people right here. And, then, and we go after, we please people, and we don't want to take advice. Pilate's own wife said, don't listen to him. Don't do it. I've been greatly. She goes, no, nah, not my problem. I, I'm too afraid of losing my power. I'm too afraid of what people are going to think. I'm too afraid of, of, the, of the, 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 the backlash. Let me just wash my hands. I'm not responsible for this. And so he too tried to offer something else. He says, well, let the people decide rather than standing up for what he knew was right. Or we can be like Jesus, the ultimate example. And there's several amazing responses in the midst of being on the cross. In Luke 23, 34, he says, Father, forgive them. And that while he's suffering, 
He forgives those around him. And I believe many of us, we understand this as well, that when we're suffering, when we're going through the hardest times, that's when we least want to forgive. Yeah. You know, secondly, in Luke 23, 42, and in John 15, 25 to 27, Jesus thought of others. He was on the cross. He's suffering. He goes, mother, this is your son. Son, this is your mother. Wow. And he took care of these when he's going through pain and in the pain of COVID, in the pain of financial hardship, in the pain of us watching friends and family die, in the pain of quarantine, in all of this, we've got to be those. We say, Father, forgive them. We look at them and say, I want to help and serve in the midst of my trials because crosses come, come when you least expect it. Come on, Secondly, bro, bro. what do we learn right here? A cross is given. Because God believes you can handle it. You know, Simon from Cyrene was chosen for a reason to carry Jesus's cross. You know, he was probably very tall. He was very strong. And when the Romans saw him, they thought, this guy can handle it. He was a head above the rest. He was muscular. He yeah. basically looked like Ole or something. You know what I'm talking about? Oh. oh. And they go, this oh, guy that. can handle it. Wait, what? And that's why he chose it. That's the only reason why. I mean, there's all these people, but they go, this guy can handle it. Well, what was the alternative for Simon? It was death. The Bible says they forced him to do it. You know, often when a situation is forced on us and it's not in our control, what happens? We start to question God. We say, God, why would you do this? Don't you care? Don't you love me? Well, let's look over in Hebrews chapter 12 and find out. You with me, your family? Mm -hmm. Come on, bro. Come on, bro. Come on, bro. Come on, bro. This is good, bro. I misunderstood my, my lesson circumstances here because, you know, they said, hey, you're going to be preaching the last lesson of 2020. I thought it was, hey, I get to preach my last lesson until 2021. So I'm not quite sure. We'll, we'll see where it lands. Right, We're going right, to land right. somewhere between now it, and January 1st of 2021. Amen. Come on, bro. Amen. And cross oh, because God believes you can handle it. Hebrews chapter 12, verse 7. This endure hardship as discipline. God is treating you as his children. For what children are not disciplined by their father? If you are not disciplined and everyone undergoes discipline, then you are not legitimate, not true sons and daughters at all. Moreover, we all have had human fathers who disciplined us and we respected them for it. How much more should we submit to the father of spirits and live? They disciplined us for a little while as they thought best, but God disciplines us for our good in order that we may share in his holiness. No discipline seems pleasant at the time, but painful. Later on, however, it produces a harvest of righteousness and peace for those who have been trained by it. Amen. Amen. Wow. You know, the Bible says right here, to endure hardship as discipline. It doesn't say overcome hardship. And many times you go, man, I want to conquer this. I want to overcome this. I want to be done with this. And God's command, God's calling perhaps for you on, right now, is to not overcome, but to endure with what's going on. Why? Because that when you go through that, that discipline, we have it totally flipped upside down in our understanding of God. We think in ourselves, man, when I got straight A's on my report card, I came home and my parents would take me to Dairy Queen and I'd get a blizzard. And so we think when we do good, we deserve good. And then if we got in trouble and we had to mow the lawn, we have to say, well, if I do bad, I get bad. It's the opposite with Thanks. God. God loves you so much. He cares about you so much that he understands the only way you're going to learn is not when you're comfortable with your blizzard on the couch. 
He understands you're going to learn and grow and become who you need to be by getting out in the hot sun, getting your hands dirty, scraping your knees and your elbows, having to push the hot lawnmower, having to take it all out from there and clean it all out. Not the self-propelled one, but pushing it and going through it. You're going to learn lessons that will last you a lifetime. Amen. Come on, bro. Amen. Come on, Tyler. Um, but what's the challenge? Come on, bro. When, when we don't go through it, you see, we give up on the lessons that God wants to teach us. And two things happen in our life when we get hit with a hardship. We either become better or we become bitter. The bitterness is simply the feelings that result from something that's hard to accept. Bitterness is not just the person that goes, mm, and their face gets all puckered up and their arms crossed. I'm bitter. No, bitterness are the feelings that result from what we don't want to accept. So when God disciplines, we go, I don't like this. And we get sad and down. That is a form of bitterness. When we get angry, we go, I don't like this. That's bitterness. When we just become complacent, when we become lukewarm, when we become disengaged, these are the feelings that result because something happened in your life that you didn't want to accept. You didn't want to endure. And rather than becoming better you like me and many of us many times we instead become bitter well how do you know you're better the bible says right here there's a harvest of righteousness and peace you see that when we go through something we can either learn nothing or something and that we can many times we go yeah i'm glad i got through that but let me tell you how mad i am about it yeah, I went through that, but let me tell you how I was the victim. Yeah, let me tell you that. But no, no, there's a lack of righteousness and a lack of peace. And that God's love, when we go through it, the end result is a harvest of righteousness and a harvest of peace. Come on. Are you at peace in your life right now? Mm -hmm. If you're not, perhaps you went through something that you didn't want to accept as hardship. You didn't want to accept as discipline. And God's loving grace is to take 2020, and if need be, to repeat it for you again, so that you over time can have a harvest of righteousness and peace. Are you with me, our family? Come on, bro. Come on, bro. Come on. You know, I'm with you, bro. Come on. Come on. We're going to go through this, whether we like it or not. We're going to go through the COVID situation and eventually get out of it, whether it's from, from a vaccine or whether we find a different style of cure or we have herd immunity or whatever. We're going to get through this, guys. That is a, a, a bona fide fact. You don't need to fact check that. We're going to get through it. An independent source doesn't need to fact check whether or not we're eventually going to get through COVID. See, whether or not you want to, it's going to be there. But we've got to make a decision on how we're going to be when we come out of it. And then rather than going through COVID-19, I want to challenge us to go through COVENANT-19. A COVENANT-19. Ooh, come, come on, on Tyler. As we okay. go through right there, come on, come on. we come out more loving, faithful, sacrificial, committed, focused, zealous, pure, kind, evangelistic, prayerful, gracious, inspiring, genuine, open, radical, patient, humble, responsible, self-controlled, and courageous. That we go after the covenant of these 19 areas. Just go after this. That this is the very cure for what we're going through right now. Who has all of these qualities? No, not just my wife, Shay, amen. But Jesus Christ. Come on, bro. Amen, Tyler. Come on. But how did Jesus get there? By taking on the cross that God knew he could handle. Come on, Let us bro. embrace the cross that you've been given and become who God wants you to be. Our third aspect, how we can cross the finish line. When you carry the cross, you are the closest to Jesus. When you carry the cross, you are the closest to Jesus. You see, when Simon from Cyrene carried that cross, he was in fact the closest he was ever going to be to Jesus. Is that not awesome to think about? 
Tomorrow. That a man who just happened to be there from another Tomorrow. country who didn't know what was going on because he was forced to go through this hardship that he didn't want to do. He was forced to carry it. He himself got to walk the very steps of Jesus. Come on, bro. Uh, let's go. The same for us today. When we carry the cross, we are the closest to Jesus. Look in Luke chapter 9. Luke chapter 9. I've got a great audience of a couple of little puppers. I'm sure you guys hear them over there. I love it. Even dogs get the crumbs. Amen. Amen. Sure. Luke Amen. chapter 9. Come on, bro. Verse 23. Come on, Arlo. The Bible says, Then he said to them all, Whoever wants to be my disciple must deny themselves and take up their cross daily and follow me. For whoever wants to save their life will lose it, but whoever loses their life for me will save it. We stop right here. This is really interesting. What, why, would, like, why would Jesus, of all the things that he said someone has to do, would have to go through this to follow him. Why didn't he say, like, if anyone wants to follow me, then, then they got to, like, you know, eat this jello. Or they got to, like, you know, uh, buy a, 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 you know, a pair of running shoes. Or they got to, you know, he could have said anything. But he said this. Why? Because he knows we'll never be close to him unless we carry our cross. That when we go through what he went through, we understand a little bit more about Jesus. You know, we'll never be close until we carry that cross. Let's be reminded about one last element here of the cross on why we need to carry our cross and what it does for us in order to cross the finish line. Look on over in Exodus chapter 15. Come on, bro. Come on, bro. Exodus chapter 15. We're going to find out something quite incredible about the cross. Exodus 15, down in verse 22. The Bible says, Then Moses led Israel from the Red Sea, and they went into the desert of Shur. For three days they traveled in the desert without finding water. When they came to Marah, they could not drink its water because it was bitter. That is why the place is called Mara. So the people grumbled against Moses saying, what, what are we to drink? Then Moses cried out to the Lord and the Lord showed him a piece of wood. He threw it into the water and the water became fit to drink. There the Lord issued a ruling and instruction for them and put them to the test. He said, if you listen carefully to the Lord your God and do what is right in his eyes, if you pay attention to his commands and keep all his decrees, I will not bring on you any of the diseases I brought on the Egyptians, for I am the Lord who heals you. Then they came to Elim, where there were 12 springs and 70 palm trees, and they camped there near the water. You know, this is, this is incredible. God's people had just been set free from the Egyptians. They now travel three days. Remember, they watched the Egyptians get wiped out by the water. They saw all the plagues. They understood the power and the miracles of God. And yet, now, just three days later in the desert, because they didn't have water. Now, you need water to survive, especially in the desert. They start to grumble and say, God, why would you do this? The very waters you gave us, you gave us bitter waters. It was from God. And so Moses, being a spiritual man, he cries out to God, what do you want me to do? How do I fix this? Are you going to call down another plague and, and show everybody? Is there going to be fireworks and power and all this stuff? Is there going to be big splashes of water and all these majestic things? And God goes, no, no, no. It's right there. Is it, gonna be, is it, oh, is it a burning bush? You're going to talk to me to the bush? Again? No, no, it's right there. Right, right there. Oh, is it? Oh, no, no. Around right. What is it? It's a piece of wood. Are you serious right now? Like a piece of, how can a piece of wood? So, so God's people watch Moses as he's negotiating probably with God. He picks up this piece of wood. He walks over to the water. He throws it in. Kaboosh, and he goes, you're good to go. And the people, they, wow, it's good to go. And that this piece of wood took away the bitterness. What is that for us today? It's the cross. You see, many times we can't overcome the very bitterness of our past because the very problem is the very solution. 
the problem of not uh, wanting wow. to take up this piece of wood. Mm. That's the very solution for the bitterness and the hardship so of good. our wow. life. Wow. Powerful, bro. Come, Come on. on, bro. Come on, brother. Come on. For us today, Come on, brother we must here. cross the finish line. I think about in 2020, as the Holy Spirit was able to send out the church plantings in Amsterdam in the Netherlands and Campinas over in Brazil in the little island right there of Guam, seeing Salt Lake City be sent out, Minneapolis be sent out, Tucson be sent out, and just a few months ago, Kolkata, India was sent out. You see, oh. we're able to take up a cross. And this piece of wood is going around the world and taking away bitterness throughout the nations. You know, Lord willing, in 2021, we're going to see Baguio City be sent out over in the Philippines, Colombia and Sri Lanka, or Colombo and Sri Lanka, St. Petersburg in Russia, Brazzaville in Congo, Yaoundé in Cameroon, Edinburgh in Scotland, Bahrain in the Middle East, Madrid in Spain, and Crouching Tiger number three be sent out. That's outside mm, of the Let's US. go. Hey, Lord, come Lord, on. Boise, Idaho be sent out. Providence, New England, Philadelphia, Pennsylvania has already been sent out. Detroit, Tuscaloosa, and Detroit. St. Louis. Boom. Oh, churches. yeah. By the end Let's of go. 2021. You know, Maybe. we could have just taken our ball and gone home. We could have just folded up our tent and went back indoors. But we were willing to take on the bitterness. We're willing to take on the hardship as we gave and sacrificed for our special missions contribution, as we're willing to sacrifice leaders and people and resources and time and energy and futures and plans and dreams, not the vision dream that we have, but when we relied on our God, God made Come it on. happen. Come on. All of this is going to happen in 2021 when we are willing to cross that finish line. And God will give us a new one each day, each month, and as we come in a few days, a new year. You see, John 19, verses 28 to 30, says, Later, knowing that everything had now been finished. And so that scriptures would be fulfilled. Jesus said, I am thirsty. He wasn't talking about the thirst that we know in the world today. He was thirsty. He wanted to do everything he could for God. He wanted the living waters to be put back into his life. He wasn't hungry anymore because he ate. He had done God's will. He had finished the work. And as a, wa- a jar of wine vinegar was there, so they soaked a sponge in it put the sponge on a stalk of the hyssop plant and lifted it to Jesus' lips. When he had received the drink, Jesus said, it is finished. With Mm -hmm. that, he bowed his head and gave up his spirit. Jesus finished the race. Second Timothy chapter four, verse seven. Paul says, I have fought the good fight. I have finished the race. I have kept the faith. Paul finished the race. Hebrews 12, Verses one and two says, therefore, since we're surrounded by such a great cloud of witnesses, because we know Moses is there, because we know probably Simon from Cyrene is there, because we know that Jesus is there, because we know that Paul and Timothy and all the great heroes in the faith are surrounding us as we run this final lap. He says, we're surrounded. Let us throw off everything that hinders and the sin that so easily entangles and let us run with perseverance the race marked out for us. You see, San Jose and Silicon Valley, my dear brothers and sisters, today, tomorrow, and for the rest of 2020 and then on into 2021, all of us must make that decision. Every single one of us must be willing to do what it takes that for us, we will excel in everything, that we're not just going to get in there, but take it even further in our faith. Come on, and bro. Secondly, come on. We will cross the finish line. We'll do it because we know that crosses come when we least expect it. We'll do it because we understand that crosses are given because God believes we can handle it. And we'll do it because we know that when we carry the cross, we are the closest to Jesus. Let us on, today bro. finish the race. And to God, let's go. Come on, bro. 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 Come on, bro
Hey. Let's give it up one more time for Tyler. What a very inspiring lesson. Let's go. Uh, Come on, Tyler. Us to hear this Sunday morning. Uh, and, you know, I think uh, one of the biggest.